Hello and welcome back to Valhalla. It's been quite some time since we returned to this series. It's been about a month, I believe. Um, a little longer for you guys because I don't upload these videos right um, as I play them. So yeah, it's been over a month now. The last thing I remember, the last big thing I remember is our ex's little sister visiting us in the bar and giving us the unfortunate news that our ex has passed away. Um, and I think we're still feeling a little guilty about that. And the last time we played, we had Kim and Say stop by the bar, I believe, and they did their best to cheer us up. But yeah, we'll see how things go in today's episode. But it looks like Jill wants to get in the holiday mood. Buying a mega Christmas tree will prevent her from getting too distracted. All right. So it looks like that's something we should purchase before we go to work. Mega Christmas tree. All right, Jill bought what she wanted and she's pleased with herself. She will surely focus at work. And let's do that. Friday, December 23rd. Good evening. Uh, hey. How are you feeling? Lilam are soft and warm. Oh, that's right. Um, at the end of last episode, uh, our boss hired Dorothy um, to stay the night with us. Not in any you know, intimate manner, but just because it would, it would, she thought it would be nice for us to have someone to keep us company. Come again. You heard me. So on a scale from steaming pile of shit to just sad, where are you? Hmm. A uh, sad pile of shit? I still hate myself. I'm still sad as hell, but how to put it? The noise stopped. I don't know if I explained myself. Sorta, of, kinda. So, how were things last night? Uh, cozy, I must admit. I can't believe you paid Dorothy for that. Well, if you want to call that payment, I guess. Hmm? I called Dorothy to tell her what happened to you and she was really concerned. She stuttered for a second saying that she had the whole night to go and she couldn't just leave for free. I asked her how much and she said enough to pay for the soda I'm having is fine. <laughs> Uh, Dorothy's a Dorothy's a real character. I, I like her. How did you get her number? I have contacts. Right. Anyways, Jill, if you need a second break, a drink, or a hug, just let me know. You hear? Thanks. I'd make you the same offer, but I'm guessing hugs for me are the last thing you want. If you need a bartender, let me know, though. Nice to know. Anyways, we have work to do. And it's all set up, so let's get right into it. Time to mix drinks and change lives, but also change to the news. There you go. <laughs> it's nice to hear that again. Did you say something? Did I? Welcome to Va- Oh, it's you guys. <laughs> it's Rad Shiba. Hey, be more respectful. I brought my boss here. Aren't you a part-timer here or something? My other boss. You're talking to the great Nacho Tumbleweed Jr. Boss, I'm taking my break. I don't know what I said earlier, but you haven't even started set. Or, I know what I said earlier, but you haven't even started yet. Shit. So, what brings you here today? Well, I want to see the place my best soldier is working at. Soldier? Wait, aren't you the dog I served last Monday? Oh, it's you, Dana. I forgot what voice I gave this guy. Soldier, why didn't you tell me you were working for Dana? No, that's not Dana. That's just Jay. So, I'm guessing you're part of the whole CIRA thing? Part of it. I founded it. Humans have the best intentions, but they just don't get us. So I decided to create a place where dogs can just be dogs. Here, we can take in any dog without a place in this world. We created our own heaven on earth. And you take corgis only? Do I look like one of those sci-fi bitches? Of course not. I'd include other animals, but sadly I can only take care of those who are of the same species as I. The sad thing is, I take him more seriously, but it's a talking corgi with an eye patch. Will you be getting anything? I'm fine. Or, I'm fine. What about you, boss? 
manly stuff. You sure? Did I stutter? All right. Um, okay, it looks like... Hmm. So manly... It says we need to serve him a crevice spike in the guide. That's, that's what we'll do. That's two powder delta, four finer guide. Whoops, and optional karma train all blended. Okay. Interesting. We've never made this drink before. All right, let's serve it up. Here. Yes, this is what I wanted. Ugh, this tastes worse than my own butt. Hey, you asked for it. This is a really nice place, you know. You picked a good place to work at, soldier. Thanks. Does he really get paid? Your efforts to keep Sierra afloat will not go to waste. We'll make her better and better. I mean, we're pretty much on the verge of closing. Can boss really afford that? We have more urgent matters at hand, though, like the fact that we don't have enough balls for everyone. Can't they just share the ones we have? You fool, every dog has a right to have his own ball. If we can't provide even that, then what's the point of even trying? Wait. Don't tell me she just doesn't give a fuck and is spending all of her money like water. I mean, what with the bar closing and all that. But many have enjoyed the boxes more than they do the balls. That's a good point. What do you think is cheaper, a box of balls or a box of boxes? Are there boxes of boxes? Of course there are. How do you think they ship boxes? <laughs> Tied together? Tied together? Don't be silly. Unless she's paying him straight from her pocket, boss is that kind of one. This is the most bizarre conversation we've ever had. We're not talking about, we're like having this inner dialogue with ourselves, wondering how our boss is paying for the bar. And these two are talking about balls and boxes. This world is filled with all sort of recursive madness, you know? Doctors consult doctors, boxes come in boxes, bottles come in bottles. Bottles do not come in, what? Ooh, as expected from you, boss. Wait, that theory only works assuming she's actually paying him with money. For all I know, she might be paying him with stakes. So tomorrow you're gonna check for people selling boxes, you hear? Sir, yes sir. Except that to boss a good stake is more valuable than money. Wait, what if they come for what if they come with foil? Bruce and Strauss had to be taken to the bed because he ate the he ate the foil a piece of cheese came in. Curses, you're right. We need a contingency plan. Besides, boss is not one to scam people, let alone a dog. I wonder if we can strike a deal with a vet those Cyfar bastards had. She's always so nice with us. I know, her smile is so cute too. So it's better that we vet for a vet? Yes, put that on the list. Ah, Nacho. Oh yeah, forgot she knew the dog. Are you staying for a while? I was just passing by. I have got to run some errands. Great, Gil can go with you. I can? You will. I'll still get paid for it today, right? That depends on Nacho's evaluation. Alright, Greenhorn, let's get going. Oh, I'm paying him anyways, by the way. Just wanted to mess around with him. No, that's not the problem here. Why make him do that? He looked like he needed to take a good break, and he's the kind to not just accept a thing. But with Nacho, he'd have something to do, and he'd be away from the bar for a while. When you put it that way... Anyway, I'm going back to my office. Your boss sure is nice. Glad I'm working with her too. Yeah. So, you having anything? Actually, I'm just gonna go sit over there and be on standby. Await orders. Okay. Shit, I missed the chance to ask how or even if he gets paid with money. Betty. I don't remember Betty. Man, I sure need to get wasted. Deal? I'm not sure who these characters are. I fail to see how getting wasted will make you feel but Sheba! For fuck's sake, you piece of scrap, we just got out of a building full of dogs. But this one has a Hawaiian shirt and sunglasses. Hey there, robot. And he talks. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, yeah, I remember Betty and... Okay, yeah. Hey, Jill. Get me a beer, will you? Gotcha. Does Deal want anything? Okay, roll. Sir, yes sir. So cute. 
he's fine. Just a beer then. Friday after work isn't just a beer though, it's THE beer. Can't argue with that. Uh, and she wants it big, so let's give her a big beer. Just two aldehyde, four Bronson extracts, two powder delta, four finer guide, and eight carmatrine. And mix it. And serve it up. Here, let's make it special. Yeah, cheers. Hey, Jill, do you like beer? The amount of beer cans in my apartment is becoming a problem, actually. I had this friend back in high school who made some pretty nice crafts with them. I'm still in contact with him if you're interested. No thanks. The last thing I need right now is more craft taking up space. So how are things up at Dogtown? Well, that Laura girl, or that Laura girl, Jesus, is stirring things up for better or for worse. For worse? She's, um, like a rabbit. An overtly politically correct rabbit. R rabbit? Never had a pet rabbit? They're a nervous mess that gets startled over the littlest of things. And this girl's on the cons constant lookout, scared of saying something that might irk someone. It doesn't have to be the person she's speaking with, even. It's no problem in the company, but the other day we went out together and holy shit. Poor girl, poor girl can't even speak properly. She pauses every sentence to make sure she doesn't say something offensive. I mean, I appreciate that. I mean, it kind of sucks that uh, she doesn't seem to have like internalized the quote unquote rules um, because it sounds like she's like going through the list and making have, having like a checklist every time she says something, which isn't really the way to go about it. She's a nice girl and it's sweet that she tries so hard to not offend anyone. Yeah, I agree. But seriously, she tries too hard. You don't help either. Hmm? You randomly say, what did you say? Whenever she's within earshot distance. Yeah, well, it's just that she looks so cute when she's startled. Like a rabbit. It raises up the question of whether she's really like that. Or if you're the one making her wary of anything she says. Well, why don't we test that? How? You go out with her. Why? To test if it's really me who makes her like that. It's not like you can say no, you know? I mean, it's my honor that's on the line here. I want to prove you're only talking shit about me. Even if you were right, you have quite the fixation on that girl. She's fun. Fun how? She actually reacts when I tease her. You take in your stride, but she actually gets startled, squirms, and then gets uncomfortable. How is that any good? She's cute, and her reactions are cute. But if you keep it up, she'll either leave or get used to you. You know, like me. Shit, you're right. I must save my teasing for when the moment is right, then. No, that's not the problem here. It is for me. And what are you doing? What about the dog? He said he had to go out. By the way, he said his name was... Say, this Laura girl, do you guys get along? I wouldn't know. We get along as co-workers at the very least. What kind of girl is she, aside from the whole politically correct rabbit thing? Slow. She's the kind that does things so carefully that she does them really, really slow. Really, really slow. I can't deny that when she actually finishes stuff, she does a really great job, but... It's unnerving. She doesn't actually have to be with us in the building, though. She's more like a freelancer. Why is she there, then? Because she likes dogs. And that's why I insist that you two would make a fine couple. That's a really superficial statement. It's like saying you'd be fine with someone because you're both women. <laughs> okay, bad example. May I say something? By all means. If that Laura girl is really as bland as you claim her to be, wouldn't she be better off with a more, um, a more assertive person? Lylem, uh, a more assertive partner? Yo, piece of scrap, she's totally calling you a pussy. She is right, though. Sharing interests and being compatible are totally different things. But then you'd be underestimating the power of love. Whether you want to admit it or not, love changes people for better or for worse. Who knows, maybe you'll become more assertive after spending time with her. Or she'll drive me nuts. 
I guess that's a possibility too. Still, why are we so why are you so insistent on me and her getting together? Because she's like a cute rabbit, so someone might try to eat her out there. So someone might try to eat her out there. Wow, I really put the emphasis on the wrong words. I, I just saw you. <laughs> okay, let's just pretend that didn't happen. It'd be a lot easier to keep her in my sight. So in short, your motherly instincts arose because of Laura. Why not she if she likes you and... You already tried to hit on her, didn't you? You make me sound like some kind of skirt chaser. She's not into girls. How did you find out? I asked her directly. Of course you did. She seemed, um, giddy afterwards, though. I heard her muttering something about meeting her first lesbian. It was weird. Okay, enough Laura for a night. That... Refrain from using that's what you said last night jokes or variations thereof, please. Party pooper. Let's get a drink then. Sounds good. I'll have a light bloom, please. And a fringe weaver. Okay. Let's make that bloom light first. Whoops, there we go. Just four aldehyde, one powdered delta, two flanner guide, three chromatrine. Age it, and on the rocks, mix. And then in slot two, we need a fringe weaver. Which is one aldehyde and nine chromatrine. Age it and mix it. Let's serve it up. Here you go. I wonder why it's called a bloom light. Seems it was developed. It was first developed at some video games event. The creator said something about making the attendees feel like their customers do. Said attendees were, of course, part of some big games company. Seems that company always used too much bloom lighting, so the bartender there literally made all their drink, made them drink all the bloom. So it's not car that, called that because it glows in the dark. Not this one, no. Come to think of it, did you ever did you ever change because of a relationship, Jill? In more ways than one, I guess. Would you say for better or for worse? I guess for the better, I'm too thick-headed to develop any new bad habits. Although thanks to my first boyfriend, I did pick up a very annoying habit of correcting people's grammars on the fly. Pretty annoying when I think back to them, or when I think back to it. So you were one of, the, you were one of those kinds of people. As for me, sometimes I think I became, uh, what's the word? Cynical, jaded, bitter, tired of the crap this world and everyone in it throws on a daily basis. Hey, I'm just quoting you. But yeah, I think I became all of that because of this one girlfriend I had in college. She got me into the whole activism thing in the first place. How is that bad? We'd all go and protest, we'd start all kinds of movements as the things changed. I really got into the whole thing. But whenever I want to get more serious, I'd find myself coming up against the wall. The wall is an analogy for the fact that not everyone is willing to go that far. I found out pretty fast that most of them were in the whole thing because of some shitty fad. And not because they actually believed in whatever movement they were championing. So I moved from group to group only to find people who were in it because of a fad. And when they were not in it because of a passing fad, they were of the dangerous extremist kind. My tolerance for people's shit was greatly diminished after all that. So it wasn't so much the person you had a relationship with, but rather other people. Um, you seriously never thought about it that way? Uh, huh. you need to stop putting the blame for what you do on past relationships. Whatever. Where's the other guy, by the way? He had to escort one of the dogs outside. Figures. Oh yeah, the one that was here asked if you were the nice vet lady that works at Safe Our Toy Company. I suppose he's interested in talking to you or something. Why didn't he do it then? I don't know. You haven't been doing a few jobs on the side, haven't you? You've been doing a few jobs on the side, haven't you? The pay for the dogs isn't enough to keep up the mountain debts. I don't know how you do it. It's hard to believe dogs pay you at all. But this is coming from someone working at a place that pays a dog for doing fuck all. Or at least I think we're paying him? I'm not completely certain we do. Will you get anything else? Well, 
We're fine, but we have to get up early tomorrow. And by we, I really mean her. She got invited to a picnic and I won't stand to hear another. Had to go to a picnic with a hangover story. Fine. Let's go then. See you, Jill. Bye. Please come again. Man, you're such a party pooper. You'll be the party pooper tomorrow if you keep drinking. Boss, I'm going to take my break. Call me if someone comes. All right. All right, that was a pretty, a pretty interesting episode, I feel. I think we're feeling a lot better um, after we got, even after we got the news of our ex-girlfriend. Um, there was a bit of reflection that we had in this episode when um, we were asked, has there ever been a moment where a relationship has changed you? Um, but yeah, I think we're doing a lot better. We're in a better place than we were uh, two episodes ago. And we'll see how we are after the break, which we'll pick up on in the next episode. So until then, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you then.